Hello. We are starting. Hi. You're all welcome. Uh, my name is Ersan Ojak, and I'm just I'm part of the group, indeed the founder of the group, and also the chair of the, this presentation. Uh, before starting the presentation, I would like to ask a question. Did you watch this film, experience this film, Pina, in 3D? Yes, 3D. You experienced it. Yeah, that's nice. No one is. Oh, that's unlucky. <laughs> Uh, fortunately, we also watched the film in 3D and we got so thrilled that we decided to make this kind of presentation. Uh, uh, although, although we'll make our speeches mainly on the 3D experience of this specific film, Pina 3D by Wim Wenders, uh, unfortunately today we cannot provide you 3D material for this presentation, which is an ambitious goal, but we are planning to make it in the future. Thus, we have a very fundamental problem that can only be overcome by your help. We expect you to imagine each picture in 3D, not only as cinematic effects, but within their potential effects as well, because it's mainly the effects, not a kind of an effect. Is it? And at this point, I also want to briefly explain how this, this study began. Uh, after watching this film, three of us, Almost one and a half year ago, I made a call to my colleagues Kurtul Shozgen and Shafak Dikman to establish a research group on art house 3D cinema and filmmaking, not only as a theoretical research group, but practice-led research group, so we also concentrate on the practice. Since then, we have been exploring the potentialities of 3D cinematography, which is called stereography, not only as academic researchers, but as filmmakers, and media designers as well. Uh, I mean, three of us are not only academics and, and the university, but also filmmakers and designers doing practical works. Our ultimate aim is to do research and make 3D art house films simultaneously within an intermediate scientific approach and within an intermediate artistic style. And at this point, let's watch the official trailer of the film. The trailer of the movie consists of selected scenes from the film, as it's always been, with graphic titles which ask three questions successively. Is it dance? Is it theater? Or is it just life? In a sense, audience is pushed towards making an inner voiceover and asking herself, himself, these questions before the film. From the very beginning, even at the, at the stage of making a decision whether to go or not to go this film. 
Then we see themes such as love, freedom, struggle, longing, and namings of emotions such as joy and despair, and goes on. And finally, at the mot final, the motto of Pina Bausch appears on the frame. Dance, dance, otherwise we are lost. This means a lot for me because I'm an ex-dancer, so really, really, dance, dance, otherwise you, will, you are really lost. I mean. <laughs> Uh, at, at the final scene of the film, we hear this statement through Pina Bausch, her own voice. Dance, dance, otherwise we are lost. Indeed, the three questions which are seen on the trailer of the film makes the intermedial characteristic and structure of the film so obvious. In other words, in the trailer of the film, an intermediate promise is given to the potential audience viewer, which is expected to occur between and among Dance, theater, cinema. I think with the questions, cinema appears as the life itself here. Yeah? At least and as much as dance and theater. And here I should underline that with this open, closed declaration of intermediality is made through dance, theater, cinema, it also includes painting, sculpture, architecture as well. And according to Wenders, without 3D cinematography, which is stereography, this intermediality could not be realized specifically for a film on Pina Bausch and her Fans Theater Wuppertal. My colleague Kurtuluş Özgen uh, from Ankara, Gazi University, Faculty of Fine Arts in the Department of Photography and Video, is not only an academician, at the university, but also a cinematographer and filmmaker, will focus on this term stereography and conceptualize it through its intermediality within Baroque understanding of painting and taking it to the very contemporary times of ours. On the other side, we want to emphasize that the stereographic image reproduction and montage within the 3D, 3D digital technology of new media makes specifically this film possible. Okay, at the official website of the film, the essentiality of the 3D characteristic is explained at the section entitled as a development of the project. This, this phase, the production phase of the film has taken almost 20 years. And I quote from there, quote, Wim Mendes was deeply impressed and moved when in 1985 he saw for the first time Café Müller that you just watched a, a few sequences by choreographer Pina Bausch when the Thans Theater Wuppertal performed in Venice at the occasion of a retrospective of Bausch's work. Out of the meeting of the two artists grew a long-standing friendship and with the passage of time the plan for a joint film." End of quote. Uh, that's, that's, that's the year these two artists, Pina Bausch and Wim Wenders, met, 1985. And indeed, uh, we know from an interview with Wenders that he doesn't like indeed these dance performances. And because of the insistence of his girlfriend, he accepts to go to Café Miller performance and he gets so thrilled that he watched the whole performance in cries. And then watched the whole other performances and becomes a very good friend of Pina Bausch and they decide to make a film together, which has taken 20 years to, to prepare. Uh, the common characteristic of these two artists is that they are both so much inclined to cross boundaries in their own major artistic field. In essence, they are open to multidisciplinary study and already made transdisciplinary artistic works in their lives. And I'm quoting again from the same text. However, putting the plan into action failed for a long time because of the limited possibilities of the medium, 2D cinema. Wenders felt that he had not yet found a way to adequately translate Pina Bausch's unique art of movement, gesture, speech, and music into film. End of quote. For Wenders, already existing medium with its forms and technical conventions of 2D cinema was not sufficient enough to translate Pina Bausch's unique art into cinema. Uh, I mean, we are critically approaching the, the, the verb translate, we are using the verb transform instead of that. Then, with the development of 3D cinema as a new medium, the project of transforming Pina Bar's unique art into cinema seemed possible to Wim Wenders. 
and courting again. Over the years, the joint film project turned into a friendly ritual, almost a running gag, with both artists reminding one another of their plan. Pina Bausch was mostly asking the question, when? She was impassioned about that. And Wim Wenders was answering this question as, as soon as I know how. This is really important because he, he couldn't really find out the way how he could do this transformation. Or you may say with the musical term, the transpose of the, of the things, the, all the poses into the cinematic realm. Uh, and quote, the defining moment finally came for Wim Wenders when the Irish rock band U2 presented their digitally produced 3D concert film, U2 3D, in Cannes. Wenders knew immediately, with 3D, our project would be possible. Only in this way, by incorporating the dimension of space, I could dare, and not just presumingly, to bring Pina's dance theater in an adequate form to the screen or maybe he should say that to the space of the cinema. Yes, Wenders says that only in this way, by incorporating the dimension of space, he could dare to bring Pina dance theater in a good form to the screen. Here, we should focus on Wenders' statement of incorporating the dimension of space. What does the incorporation of the dimension of space mean? There has always existed dimension of space in cinema at least the illusion of depth in motion pictures through perspective that's learned from the Western painting and used by photography before, which is one of the basic conventions of the cinema itself. And is it only the incorporation of space? Cinema has consisted of time inherently from the very beginning. It has been the art of motion in time and space with the corporeal performance of actors, actresses, or things through literary narratives. And the filmmaker is the one who has developed the audiovisual aesthetic organization of all these within conventions by decision-making processes that's called regime. Then what's the basic act of filmmaking regime in 3D cinema, for vendors at least in this case? It is the incorporation of the dimension of space, of narrative, optic, performative, and special artistic disciplines, which are literature, poetry, painting, photography, dance, theater, sculpture, architecture, respectively, all into 3D cinema. So when it's a total art, yeah, it's a kind of a total art. Then the incorporation of the dimension of space in Pina 3D by Wenders is more than an illusory perspectival understanding of cinema, which is learned through painting photography, but the incorporation of performative space of Pina Bausch dance theater in this case, which is also a sculptural architectural one. I mean, we may watch also from a point on also the something that thinks Hence, in 3D cinema, in addition to that, Pina Bar's performative world exists the literary narrative and includes the non-literary narrative of the dense physical theater as a performance art. Hence, in 3D cinema of Vendes, cinematic form is expanded as a necessity. I mean, here you, here you she see is what I mean by the non-literary narrative. There is a narrative here, but it's not a literary narrative. It's a non-literary narrative. Of course, the necessity becomes so obvious when we look at the artistic editor of Bausch with the new 3D technology. Wim Wenders picks up the work of dance theater that has always consisted in crossing boundaries, explains Peter Pabst, set designer of the dance theater Wuppertal since 1980, and art director of the film production Pina. I think this is also an intermediate positioning of an artist as a set designer and an art production phase and a kind of an uh, art director of the film. Crossing the border, quote, 
Crossing the border between the stage and the viewer is an important part of the choreography. I think this is it. This is this this no no need to do I mean a bit maybe. Crossing the border between the stage and the viewer is an important part of the choreography of Pina. The dancers are constantly engaged with the audience, even physically coming down from the stage. It has always played a crucial role for Pina Bausch that her pieces are completed first in the heads, eyes, heart, and in the feelings of the audience. Here I want to underline that this is not only crossing the boundary of the stage. This is the kind of making the audience engage with the work and become a co-creator, co-producer, co-maker of the film or, or the performance. So the audience becomes the performers also at the same time when the, cross, the boundaries are crossed. So here we can see breaking down of the traditional boundaries. In performance arts, traditionally, performance Performer has been seen as an interpreter of an already existing literary text. This is rejected with the experimental approach of the avant-garde artists and performer is seen as creator of an act or action, according to Carlson. And Carlson states that, quote, closely related to this is the shift from product to process from the created object to the act of creation that you all watched in the Café Müller scene that Shafak showed you. Indeed, you see the whole production process. You are not only experiencing the performance or watching the, the performance, but you see the production process of the performance itself, which is very old kind of experimental tradition, which we can go back to the film of Man with a Movie Camera to Ziga Vertov of almost equally from product to process, from created object to the act of creation, of almost equally great importance was the breaking down of traditional boundaries. The boundaries between the plastic and performing arts, between the high arts of theater, ballet, music and painting, and popular forms such as circus, vaudeville, variety, indeed, even between art and life itself. End of quote. <clears throat> Especially at Café Müller sequence, we can see the shift from product to process. When we look at the history of performance arts, we see that there is an interest in movement and change, starting with futurists. And the interest of the futurists in movement and change drew them away from the static work of art and provided an important impetus for the general shift in modern artistic interest from product to process, turning event, even painters and sculptures into performance artists. I want to underline this sentence, turning even painters and sculptures into performance artists. This is, this is the, I mean, contemporary and postmodern painting and sculpture. And, but, here, I want to go back to this non-literary narrative and we contend that Wim Wenders' Pina 3D as an art house 3D film gains this particular position that works in complicit with other art disciplines in a non-literary non narrative. We know that, however, cinema has been under the hegemony of the literary narrative for a long time. Although avant-garde cinema has been in struggle with the literary element since the very beginning of the cinema. And it may be claimed that the mainstream cinema is ideologically prohibited to exist in a non-literary narrative field. I'm talking for the mainstream one. Which is already permitted to the other disciplines of art, especially and in a sense officially, in their postmodern phase or condition. In other words, mainstream cinema has always utilized painting, photography, dance, theater, sculpture, architecture, for the sake of establishing a literary narrative totality, well, while all these disciplines have already got the permission to exist also out of the literary narrative. They are in the literary narrative and also they can be in a non-literary narrative field. 
partially in their history and totally in their postmodern phase. I mean, you can find the examples through all the history, but especially at the postmodern phase, it's so obvious. It's an indication of the postmodernity in these realms and fields. As an example, sculpture has experienced its classical phase. As an example, sculpture as an example, sculpture has experienced its classical phase when the sculpture was essentially a commemorative representation with its relation to a particular place where it is erected on a pedestal and speaks symbolically about the meaning or use of that place. In its own modernist phase, Sculpture became functionally placeless and largely self-referential. At its postmodern phase, Krauss states that, for sculpture, practice is not defined in relation to a given medium, sculpture, but rather in relation to the logical operations on a set of cultural terms, for which any medium photography, books, lines on walls, mirrors, or sculpture itself might be used. Thus, the field provides both for an expanded but finite set of related positions for a given artist to occupy and explore, and for an organization of work that's not dictated by the conditions of a particular medium. So, kind of the medium is abolished. I mean. There is no kind of a, that kind of a medium in that sense. Everything is the medium of sculpture. Here, and I think sculpture is the most free art in that sense. Here we contend that Wim Wenders' Pina 3D as an art house 3D film gains its particular position that works in complicit with other art disciplines in a non-literary narrative field. And one of the last points that I want to underline is that the tactile and haptic part of the film. In Wenders' Pina 3D, we see that Wenders goes into an intermediate relation with architecture and sculpture by incorporating the space not only by the optical as the main dispositive of cinema, but through textures in a tactile and within the context of the bodies of performance in a haptic way. Yes, that. That, that's one of the, my, my favorite scenes. Uh, I mean, in the scene that Kurtulush just talk, you can see the very tactility and the texture in, within that tactility of the earth. And in this, the contact of the bodies of the performers and the contact of the performer with the, with the space. Biraz ses versene buna. Uh, in a sense, stereography within a 3D world that immersively takes the viewer inside every type of materiality in its immateriality, which emerged within the Baroque visual regime as discussed by Kurtulush. Martin J. explains this with reference to Buki Glucksmann as follows. The Baroque self-consciously revels in the contradictions between surface and depth, disparaging as a result any attempt to reduce multiplicity of visual spaces into any one coherent essence. In fact, because of its greater awareness of that materiality, Baroque visual experience has a strongly tactile or haptic quality, which prevents it from turning into the absolute occult centrism of its Cartesian perspectivalist rival. And, yeah, Sister I mean, the final is, is, is the final contact, I think. The contact, the haptic relation, the tactility. This is final. I mean, as I said at the very beginning, you should imagine it in 3D. I mean, when, when 3D is really, really changing, its effect is changing. Conclusively, 
optical imagination of 2D cinema cinematography within its medium specificity. That's one of the basic things. Always looking for a unique form of expression which belongs only to the filmic medium has always had a tendency towards literary narrative or vice versa, always looking or being in the service of literary narrative, optical, optical language of 2D cinema is established. <coughs> With the breakdown of the traditional boundaries between arts and even between art and life itself, brings hybridization of different artistic disciplines through materiality of all sorts which belong to these different art disciplines in 3D stereography. This leads an, to an affective narrative in the act of creation, not only belongs to artists as the creators, but audience as the co-creative as well. I mean, while watching this film, or any performance of Pina Bausch, also as a dance performance, there's not a literary narrative that you can follow or anticipate in, that you have to go into an affective engagement to complete the work. So it's, an, it's, it's necessary the engagement of the audience. And with this in 3D cinema, which, I, which we say art house 3D cinema, which makes it different uh, than the others. Here I want to underline Shafak's point that this is not a 3D edit movie. I mean, the mainstream 3D cinema is a 3D edit movie, but this is a 3D designed film and as life itself. Thanks. <laughs>